coming up on Chopper's Politics. Jordan Smith asked two questions. First question is, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> Knowing you've sold your soul to appeal to the right-wing lunatics of the Tory party, promising to take money from poor urban areas to buy votes in rich rural areas. That's one question. The other question is, what's your Nando's order? Oh my gosh, right, I'm going to do both of these, right. Hello, I'm Christopher Hope, the Telegraph's Associate Editor for Politics, and this is Chopper's Politics Podcast. Today I've left my usual seat in the Red Lion pub in Westminster to head to the headquarters of one of the Tory leadership hopefuls, Rishi Sunak. Let's go and see if we can find him. Come on. Rishi, good to have you on. This is your mug. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! So that goes back to your office. Can I, can I use this now? Yeah, you can. You can drink right, for that now. And then... Well. Look at that. There um, we go. Definitely. Boom. Rishi Sunak, welcome to Chopper's Politics. Great to meet you in your office. Well, thanks for having me. Although, to be fair, I'm, this is only about the third time I've been here, mm. I think. Cause I, You've been around the country. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's very rare that I'm here. I'm spending all my time out and about. I, I, I said this morning, I feel like I've gone around our country twice yes. in three weeks. So we've done almost 100 events. Goodness, um, goodness. I last saw you one of the early ones, didn't I, in Harpenden. You did? Gosh, that, a, you came along, didn't you? I that was, cycled that was there on the first on, week. On a train strike day. Well, I've, yeah, so I've done... I mean, it's, that's what it's been lovely, though. It's been in people's gardens, in fields, yeah. in, in village halls, and They're all nice sorts. people, aren't they, your members? They're very I mean, nice people, yes. Ignore Twitter uh, listeners, they're nice people. No, they're fantastic. And you know what? I mean, what a great privilege it is to yeah. be seeing so many of them over the last few weeks and yeah. talking about... Is there one lesson you've country? learned from meeting members um, on a scale you've never done before? Um, I t- can't. Well, you know what? They, they, I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not new, but they all just have a deep affection for our country, yeah. right? I mean, they're, they're all people who care deeply about our country and its future. That's why they're, and they're members. engaged. They're and they're, engaged. this is the thing, and that's why they've got questions about yeah, yeah, yeah. everything, and they want to know what we're going to do. Okay. And that's that's actually great. Quick questions, and we're going, to, we're going to touch on policy, but we have put out the entire Telegraph Personal News, an hour and a half of it on this podcast just last week, so we're not going to do too much on policy. Oh, Quick. yes, you are, which I did I did rather you, well with yeah, your you, readers yeah, in that, well, didn't I? You, I yes. you may have won that I, debate. I, well, I, mean, I, yeah, uh, I know. I, I, it was hard to find that poll the day afterwards. No, so. no, no, it was out there. I think when I read one of your colleagues' articles, it was like we went to a different debate somehow. But I did. Thank, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Out, please, Louisa <laughs> and Giles. Yeah. Well, I'll say thank you to all, uh, the readers that did vote for me that are maybe yeah. listening now. Thank you for your yes. support. I was on a beach in Cornwall, it. so uh, okay. I'm forgiven well, for the reporting well, on that. Yeah. I, I was very grateful to have the strong support of Telegraph <laughs> readers after that, Hustings. If you become Prime Minister in two and a half weeks' time, what do you do on day one, week one, year one? There's are three points in your time as Prime Minister. Yeah, I, I think... I think the overriding challenge for the next prime minister is dealing with inflation and the cost of living. It's something that I've consistently said for, for a long time. Yeah. And the numbers that we just had yesterday and over the course of this campaign confirm that that's right. So I think you need to have a plan, and I have a plan, that is the right one to get a grip of inflation and not make it worse, put fuel on the fire, to help people, particularly the most vulnerable, with their bills over the winter period. And I've set out a plan to do that, which I think is, again, the right plan. And then moving on a bit to your to your other point, longer term, look, of course, there's, there's lots of things I want to do with the country. I've got a vision where I want to make this one of the most dynamic economies anywhere in the world, built on innovation, built on investment. And I think my experience, particularly in business, before being in politics, makes me uniquely placed to deliver on that. Then I want to make sure that our public services are also reformed. And I've been talking about a lot about the NHS on this campaign. Yeah. But look, day one, week one, We've got to tackle the cost of living. We've got to get a grip yeah. of inflation. Because if we make the wrong decisions then as a party, I don't think the country will forgive us and people will have a really tough time. So we need to get that right. And the other overriding thing that kind of flows through all those periods is about just restoring trust in politics mm. and making sure that people you know, do have trust in their politicians and in government. And, and you're going to win, aren't you? Even though the, the, the polls are saying you're not, but there's quite a small number of members being polled, aren't they? I mean... Well, look, it feels very different on the ground. That's all I can say. And uh, I said I've done, I've been around the country twice, it feels like. I've spoken to thousands of members. You know, it doesn't feel like the polls when I'm out and about. People respond really positively to the message. I think they agree that inflation is a challenge. People think that my plan is the right plan to grapple with it. And I believe people agree with me that we do need to support the most vulnerable mm. over the winter. And much as we all love tax cuts, that's not the way to do it. Because if you're a pensioner on a fixed income on a state pension, the tax cut that Liz is proposing isn't going to provide you any support. And I don't think it'd be right to 
to to not look after those people. So look, that look, I'm I'm that's what I'm getting when I'm out and about, and I'm going to give it everything I've got yeah, till yeah. the last day of this thing because I passionately believe in, in yeah. what I'm talking do, about. Do, do, do you read Private Eye magazine? Do you spot the the front page just no. two editions ago? It has some speech bubbles of you and and uh, Liz Truss, and you were both saying only I can sort out the mess left by the government I was in. I mean, do you see the the kind of madness that you're both having to uh, sort of almost attack the record of a government you served in to become leader? Well, is it unfair? I'm, 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 I'm proud of the things that yeah. I did in government, right? I mean, most people's first kind of introduction to me was the first COVID press conference. Yeah. I'm in Chancellor it for was. about a fortnight. I, and the people were like, who on earth is this chap standing next to the Prime Minister and what on earth does furlough mean? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of the, the record in government, right? People were, at a time, enormously anxious about what was going to happen. We were about to shut the country down. No mm. one knew what that meant for them, their families, their jobs, their livelihoods. And the things that were predicted were pretty horrific, quite frankly. Mm. But I successfully managed to put in place things to safeguard our economy through that. And I'm, you know, I'm pr- proud of doing that alongside yeah. the Prime Minister and with his support during those two years. But look, it got to a point for me where I couldn't stay. Mm. But look, I think people are interested now and looking forward. I yeah. mean, we can't turn the clock back. We no. are where we are. You don't regret um, being the person who, one of the people who knifed Boris Johnson. I, I mean, I look, I, as I said, it was a difficult decision for me to leave, but it was impossible for me to stay. Mm. I, you can't have a chancellor and a prime minister who don't agree on economic policy, and we didn't. Mm. And you can see that in this leadership. And how election. long was that bubbling for? I saw you, I think, at an event two days before that happened, actually. Um, and, you know, it wasn't on your mind then when we well, chatted. It, I mean, well, it, it, it might well have been on my mind. Yeah, you were going to tell me. Why are you telling journalists <laughs> things? Uh, so... <laughs> Look, I mean, we, I mean, so look, you, you can't have a PM and Chancellor who don't agree on economic policy, right? Simple as that, right? And it was, we were due to give a joint speech That's days right. after, right? And we were working on that, and it, that was clear that was a point of difference. And secondly, the, the situation with Chris Pincher was not one I could defend, right? But it wasn't, remember, yes, I resigned. That was sad. It was a personal decision. 60 other, 60 other members mm. of the government also <laughs> resigned, yeah. right? They all thought that it wasn't working. And that came what, a week, two weeks, you'll remind me, after there was a confidence vote where yeah. almost half of the MPs in our party yeah. said they didn't have confidence in the Prime Minister, right? So I know everyone now wants to have their view of what happened, but those are the facts, Are you being right? blamed up there when you meet members? Are they... Are they saying um, no, I mean, again, there's, there's been the odd cat calling in the in the TV? Yeah, there's been there's been the odd thing, and I've given them the answer I've just given you. Yeah. Right? I mean, these things are difficult and they're personal. I I couldn't defend it. Yeah. Like, I couldn't defend what was going on with the Chris Pincher thing. If other people think that they can and could, that that's fine. I'm yeah. I'm totally fine with that. And I, no matter what anyone thinks, you can't have a chancellor and a prime minister who don't agree on economic policy. Yeah. So I don't know what those people would say to me I should have done. Uh, so yeah. Because the prime minister deserved to have a chancellor who agrees with him on economic policy, particularly at a time of enormous challenge for the country when it comes to the economy. So i kind of left with no choice, yeah. really. What you've been out and about, I mean, Tories are often called, you know, racist on social media. Do you think that's completely unfair? I mean... Sorry, I'm munching on my donut. Yeah, no, you keep eating your donut. I apologise. Typically brief question from you there. I go go for for short questions. Yeah, I don't do long ones. So, look, I I, I mean, we're sitting here having this conversation, right? I was Chancellor of the Exchequer. I wasn't even the first ethnic minority Chancellor of the Exchequer. I was the second, right, in a row. And, oh, well, then there was a third after me, right? So, and, and, you know, I'm in a race to be leader of our party and prime minister of our country. And so, no, of course not, right? I mean... I mean, I'm literally living proof that not just our party is not like that, but our country is not like that. Uh, It's one of the most extraordinary, wonderful things about our country that someone like me with my story, my family's story, could even be sitting here having Mm. this conversation with you. Mm. I mean, my grandparents emigrated here 60 years ago. They built a life for themselves. My parents, as people have heard me talk about... We're we're working... Where are they working on your mother? (laughs) I forget. In a chemist. You might have heard. You might have heard. Um, But but look, look, that is... And I, I say a lot because I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of what they did for me. And, and it's because of what this, not just our party, what our country did for my family that I want to do this job. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, this country did something extraordinary for my family. And as prime minister, I just want to make sure that everyone's kids and grandkids have the opportunities yeah. that uh, this country has given me. And I think I can make that happen. Your, your background is one of, um, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you were working in a hedge fund, you've, you've, earned, you've earned your way before becoming an MP. Do you agree with Liz Truss that British workers should show more graft, as she said in a leaked audio recording? No, I haven't actually seen the, the no. recording. And as I, as I 
found myself. I wouldn't... No, quite. At the end of the day, like, the context is very important for these things. But what I do know is that there are millions of families right now who are working their socks off, and it's still going to be really difficult because it's not their fault there's a war going on and because... The inflation's so high. Exactly. And it's right, I think, that a, a conservative government recognises that and provides help to those people and does it in a way that actually will make a difference to them. And whether it's those hardworking families or pensioners... There's again, this is a big point of difference between Liz and I. Her yeah. tax cut does not help those people. It, it just doesn't. And that's why they need direct support. And I know she's ruled that out. And I hope she changes her mind if she wins this race, because the think right thing to do is boxed, to help those people. Is she boxing clever by, by, by pitching to, an, to, to the selector who might vote for her, rather than you're, you're taking a high-minded position of talking to the country outside of the, of the voting group? Well, I'm trying to do both because I think that's the right thing to do, right? Of course, I'm talking to our members because they're the ones that are choosing a leader of their party. And that's right. And their values are my values. Family, hard work, aspiration. Those are things I've been talking about a lot. And I'm a conservative through and through. I have been since I was a teenager. And I've, you know, people, I love, you know, your colleagues were dragging up the articles I wrote as a kind of probably quite irritating 17 year old, yeah. like going on about, you know, railing against Tony Blair and the European project. <laughs> that Nothing wrong without it, the Telegraph. Uh, yeah, 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 well, so, yeah, no, well, sure there's these articles I kind of forgot I wrote. It makes anyway. you very sound in our yeah, Well, our well there we go. Issue, well, that, yeah. well, that was me, right? So I'm, like, I'm a conservative through and through, and it's a great privilege to talk to our members. I'm proud to be. A member of the Conservative Party, I love it. It's values are my values, it's the values of my family. But it's also right that I want to be Prime Minister of the United Kingdom for the whole country. Of course I'm going to talk to the country and do what I think is right for the country. Now that's based on Conservative values. But I'm arguing for things like you know, being responsible with, with the country's boring, finances, yeah. right? You know, when Nigel Lawson, who's, you know, when Norman Lamont, when Michael Howard, when all these people who understand Conservative Party and have been involved in Margaret Thatcher's government... Yeah think that my approach to the economy is the right one. I think I should probably tell our members something that I, there's no doubt that I'm a true conservative and my approach to these things is conservative. Yeah. We mentioned now that your mum used to work in, in a chemist, just in case we hadn't got that one. Uh, listeners. Well, what would the 42-year-old Rishi Sunak say <laughs> to the seven-year-old Rishi um, helping to stack the shelves? Gosh, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, what would I say? Cut taxes. <laughs> Right. I'm letting you off there with stop, a joke. Stop, no, no, I'm letting you off there. Don't I? write articles that people are going to drag up 20 years yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you say? You'd say, don't worry about it. You can do I wasn't it. thinking about this when I was that You're age. You're playing cricket. I was just playing cricket. I literally was just playing cricket and, and helping my mum in the shop. Look, I, 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 mean that, I mean, that's what I was doing as a kid. That's how I was raised. Right? My, you know, for my parents, education was everything. Mm. And, and that's why, I'm, you know, I've always been made of the school I went to and everything. Like, I, I'm so proud of mm. what my parents did for me. I'm never going to apologize for it. Like, for them, working hard, working extra jobs and using all of that and going yeah. without for things themselves uh, was so that they could provide an amazing education for their three children because they thought that was the best way to make sure their kids had a better life yeah. than they did. I, and that is something that I'm really grateful for. So I work, you know, I, I guess the hard. seven-year-old would have been amazed where you ended up. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah gosh, yeah, yeah. I mean, actually, funnily enough, there's a, you know, this thing on the internet, how it started, yeah. how it's yes, going. Yes. And we did, while I was chancellor, I think I probably was about seven. There's a picture of me in my school uniform standing outside my front Absolutely. door in Southampton with my school uniform. I don't know how old I was. I probably was seven or younger. Yeah. And um, and then there's a picture of me in front of the Downing Street number 11 door as now. Right, yeah, so exactly. that. And it, I mean, my, I remember my brought my grandfather to parliament for the first time after i became an mp it was so special yeah. yeah remember i remember he stopped in westminster we were in westminster hall uh, which is the oldest bit of parliament and he just kind of stopped and he and he took out his phone and he was on the phone then i said to him i, like, I didn't quite hear what he was doing i was like what, what were you doing and he said i just wanted to call the person who we first kind of I couldn't remember whether lived with or the person who was here when we first arrived to let him know where I was standing and you know what that yeah I mean the seven year old my parents grandparents yeah. they would have not believed it in a million that's years because that's, that's where Churchill and State his oh, grandson life just was a out. member of parliament right and, and and now we're having this conversation on a different thing so like yeah I mean they would have on believed the it podcast. I mean, I mean like, I've you made it right? you've I mean, made it yeah fresh after being interviewed by my, one of my childhood heroes this morning actually which is Andy Peters Andy Peters of course yeah, and yeah, not, not, in the, not in the broom cupboard though it was not in the broom cupboard although I was so sad when he told me because I was hoping I could see the broom cupboard I would have thought they would have preserved 
loved it in yes. their studios. Yes, but yes. Uh, no, the, the, yes. it's, it's, as with so much with the BBC, cancelling our history. There yes. we go. But that, well, that's not going. No, no, there's not going down that road. I was just joking. Yeah, it, it was very nice because that was my childhood. Was was watching Andy Peters on the broom cupboard. Yeah. Are you fed up with being asked about being rich? Is it a bit annoying? No, gosh, in this case, almost nothing. You can't let, I mean, if you want to do these jobs, you have to just kind of develop a sense where these things, none of this stuff annoys you. Otherwise, you'd be mm. able to deal with it, right? I mean, um, Labour are weaponising already, aren't they? You see in the, the swimming pool you're building in Yorkshire and how can you, what, yeah, what, what will I mean, a rise in heating bills mean to a guy who owns that? Yeah. And I, look, I, I mean, I, I actually quite welcome it, to be honest. Mm. Um, this is on the opposite of annoying. First of all, very few people bring it up with me. So I've, I've done these hundred events around the country. From journalists. Yeah. So for, and actually, when I'm actually doing events with members or the public, and, and while I was chancellor as well, because while I was chancellor, I did stuff that people didn't realise. I did town halls very regularly with just members of the public uh, a lot. And so, I mean, there's some of them are online, right? So people can go and have a look at them. Uh, I did that a lot. I did them all around the country. And, and I, obviously I've done it in this campaign. Virtually nobody asks me about it, uh, oddly enough. And they ask about... Polite. Well, no, it's not that, because they'll ask plenty of other very difficult questions and, and personal questions, but they don't ask about that, um, oddly enough. But look, I welcome it. Why? Because, you know, my story is a conservative story. And as a party, our values are those where people who work hard and aspire to build something with their life and provide a better future yeah. for their children, those are values that we should champion. Yeah, yeah. And actually, as a country, we should be championing that. We should, like, people who are successful, people who do well by working hard, like, the Conservative Party's got to be on their side. Can I just clarify quickly something from Google? If you search on Google, does Rishi Sunak, the second option that comes up is, does Rishi Sunak own Nando's? Do Gosh, you own I, Nando's? I wish. I mean, wish. No. Okay. I'm not just checking out because it, it is out there. It's out there. Do you do own I Nando's? Do I own Nando's? Yeah. I wish. I, could. I mean, yeah. Whoa, hello. That would be awesome. <laughs> I was there just two nights ago. <laughs> Funnily enough, I, I managed to, I was allowed to actually have a meal for a change you, on this campaign. You, you not, eat out to which, help out. Which was not eaten on the back seat of the car. <laughs> um, so I managed... You only we, wish you'd own... We managed back. to go... Where were where, 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 Which land? Where were we? Where, God, where were we in Hustings a couple of days ago? Scotland. Scotland. I think I went after the Perth Hustings, I think. It must have been that. Yes. Cheeky Nando's in Perth. I, I was, it was after the Perth Hustings. It was yeah. great. And, I, and you want to own it? Well, I, I mean, I wish I could. <laughs> I don't know okay, if it's okay. for sale. I wouldn't have to. Yes, that would be great. Like free yeah. chicken for life. Right? The, the, Brilliant. Just no. final, final thing on your. On your I mean, who doesn't love Nando's? Oh, no, I, love I mean, and my team are fed up because I make them happy. Whenever we used to work late in the treasury for budgets and everything, we would always generally get Nando's, yeah, and right. they, they got. But because you can, it's very healthy, by the way. Yes, okay. You well, know what? Just, because I you think can we're going to lose the, the entire time with like, so, the, the food no, because of the party. People forget like it's very healthy mix. I get the grilled chicken, but then you get chips. Obviously, that's fine. But you get the broccoli is amazing. It's painful to imagine that someone would ever have paperwork about child abuse and not do everything in their power to bring the abuser to justice. But I've been speaking to people who say that seems to have happened in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Not only was he aware of the abuse, he had heard the confession of it. My colleagues and I on the Telegraph investigations team have been gathering evidence for the best part of a year, but I don't think any of us were prepared for what we'd uncover. You just wonder... What, what is going on here? I'm Catherine Rushton, and this is Call Bethel, a new audio series from The Telegraph. Subscribe now, wherever you get podcasts. We asked some questions on Twitter from our Twitter following. Right. Um, Brendan Robinson asked, if you become Prime Minister, are you confident you can find a Chancellor whose loyalty to serving the country is above their personal ambition? Yes. I mean, are, that, because, Brendan, I mean, we are, we're really lucky in our party, and you've seen it in this leadership contest from the beginning. We've got tons of fantastically talented Who will it be? Just you and me talking. No, no, no. <laughs> no listening. Would well, you want the job? Yeah, well, yeah. I was also able to run the country way fast. Because yeah. I'm going to be off running Nando's, so <laughs> yeah. there we go. So, um, yeah, no, so we're really lucky. We've got, we've got brilliant talent, right? Um, people are supporting Liz, okay. people are supporting me, people who stood in this contest. Look, the, the party's stuffed with phenomenally good people. And everyone look, should be really confident yeah. about the future of government because of that. Um, Torp77 asks, why did you enter politics? Why? Answer in a tweet, please, not in a five-minute answer, because it's a long one. It's a long one. Uh, well, actually, it's, really, it's a really good and important one. The, the, the very quick answer is because my parents, because they 
I saw that they served our community in an amazing way. And when I was out delivering medicines, people would always say, okay, you're Dr. Sunak's son, you're Mrs. Sunak's son. They tell me something about what my parents had done for them. I thought that was extraordinary and that inspired me to be an MP and hopefully I'm having the same impact on my constituents in North Yorkshire. Lexi asks, what will be your plans for the future of British farming and ensuring our food ah, security? Well, it's something I'm very passionate about, Lexi. I'll tell you this, I'll give you the short answer. My neighbour is a dairy farmer in Yorkshire. Yes. The NFU tell you me... You have milk cows. I have milk cows, as William Haig reminded yes. everyone. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 the NFU tell me I've got more farmers in my constituency than any other in England, certainly, Gosh. and I represent more sheep than people. So if, <laughs> okay. I, don't, if I don't run the most pro-farming, pro-countryside government that this country okay. has seen, my, my own, my own neighbours are going to run me out yep. of home. It's as simple as that. I am deeply committed to British farming, to food security. It's something I live and breathe every week at home. Jordan Smith asked two questions. You can answer one or the other. The first question is, how do you sleep at night? <laughs> Knowing you've sold your soul to appeal to the right-wing lunatics of the Tory party, promising to take money from poor urban areas to buy votes in rich rural areas. That's one question. The other question is, what's your Nando's order? Oh my gosh, right, I'm going to do both of these. Right, actually, funnily enough, on this, it's, uh, <laughs> funny, I haven't been asked this question this morning, which uh, about my McDonald's uh, order oh, of yes. choice, which... Which my kids pointed out to me just proves how little time I've spent with them over exactly, the last Exactly, because they discontinued it. Yeah, they have. So I showed you the January. last time. I, they said, actually, now they've moved on to these cheesy flatbreads, which is fair enough, which now I do recognise. But so the uh, on my, my Nando's order is, is standard because it's just you know, chicken, broccoli and chips, as yeah. I've said. And what sauce? Just medium. Um, I go medium on the chicken. Of course, yes. Right, yeah, medium Not on the, the chicken. Yeah. yeah. So uh, can I, no, no, I want to answer the, the, his yes, other okay. question. That's okay. really important, right? Where was I when I said that? You know what? I was in, Tell I was well, in, so. no, well, I was in Kent. I was talking to members across to Kent. Yeah. And do you know where some of them were from? Thanet, mm. right? Right, Thanet is one of the most deprived places in the country, according to multiple different measures. So the idea that you can't talk about levelling up in a place like Kent is wrong. Where was I a few days later? The Isle of Wight, where as a minister, I was working with the people on the island to address some of the particular needs they had. And look, where am I now? I'm up near places like Darlington. That is not a big urban city. They're different, they're smaller. And the point I was making is that levelling up is for everyone. So there are needs that need addressing in islands like the Isle of Wight, in rural areas, in places like Thanet, in coastal communities, in places like Darlington and Teesside. It's wrong to say that the only places where these kinds of things are necessary is big cities. Now, that was the mentality in the past, yeah. right? That was the Labour mentality, and it's wrong. And that's why we're winning in all these other places that have felt neglected for too long. So for me, levelling up is about everywhere, and everywhere has different needs. That's the point I was making, which is why I haven't walked back those comments. I'm like doubling yeah. down on what I believe. Good. I'll ask five minutes on quick fire questions. Oh, God. Was that not quick? Jeez. If you... <laughs> if you uh, if you lose, may I say, in, in your headquarters, if you lose, will you grow a beard? No. <laughs> Sasha Javid has it. We emerged today with some fuzz, which is prompting no. a Twitter I, hashtag. No, I, I, uh, although I will shave less. You'll shave less. Because it is one of my pet But let's not, let's not, let's, yeah. let's not, let's not no, just lose. I, I don't think anyone needs to see me in a beard, least of all my wife. <laughs> how, do you, how do you divide up jobs at home with Akshata, your wife? Well, last time I talked about her in an interview with one of your colleagues, I, I said some things that she is now furious with me about. So <laughs> oh, I, I, all I'm going to say is my wife is a saint. <laughs> she is a saint. <laughs> and uh, the fact that she is still married to me after everything Who I've Who does the bins through, on Sunday night? Uh, you know what? My, my wife is a saint. <laughs> okay. uh, and the fact that she's still married to me after yes. all of this is a miracle. Yes. I love her dearly. And uh, she was just with me this morning at something. And it was a treat to see does her. Does she call you Dishy Rishi? Definitely not. <laughs> what's, the most, what's the most romantic thing you've What's the most romantic thing you've ever done for her? Oh gosh, I'd like to think there's a long list of things. Asking her to marry me. I, you can't be going to get to Nando's. Asking her to marry me. Yes, of course. Okay, right, marry. I, you know, I, I, t I tell you, actually, probably one of the most romantic things I've done because I was when I met her, I was an incredibly fussy eater, and she's vegetarian. And over time, I have come to eat many, many, many vegetables as a result of that. Which for me, if anyone who knew me as a kid, yes. I was a kid who got picked up from the, the school yeah. you know, dining hall because they were like, well, if you don't eat this, you can't leave. And I, I couldn't eat it because I was just that fussy and I cried and my mum had to so take you, me up from there. Back on so, the veggies. So that is, which she knows is for me has been a big, has been a big thing. If England are playing India at cricket... Who do you both support in, in the house? Well, I, I mean, I always support England. Yes, and obviously. Yes, mm -hmm. and she's she's not massively. Into, no, I'll be honest, okay. she's not massively into cricket. No tensions. Um, but yeah, I mean, oh God, have, you, have you seen the score? What a disaster yeah, well, today! Quite. Jeez, Actually, I did take her. So the only kind of half day I had off as Chancellor in the middle of the week, I went to the first day of the England India Test match mm. at Lords, and uh, she came with me and. 
I must say, I'll, again, she, she is a saint because I desperately wanted to spend some time with her <laughs> and I also wanted to watch some cricket and she was kind yeah. to come, but she did, I think after about half the day, she did zone out a bit. When do you last laugh? I mean, laugh, laugh, not well, laugh. With you, well, well, this has yeah, been a barren of laughs, hasn't it? I mean, it's been a barren of laughs. Especially nearly, nearly, nearly a party. Yeah. What, 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 what made you laugh? My kids always make me yeah, laugh. Exactly. I have two young girls and they are, they are a total delight. Yeah. And are I you ticklish? Uh, I won't try it out. Though. No, I mean, I so that, that. I mean, it's the most bizarre things. question that a political journalist has ever asked me. Also, I mean, are we about to try? No, I mean, no, 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 I'm not going to try like and take it. I'm just. Um, I mean, no, we, we were so, thinking, yeah. what, what haven't you been asked? I mean, I, I mean, actually, like, my kids and I do have a very fun tickling game that we play. So, okay, yeah, fine, go, so, yeah, yeah but that, but I, yes, that's I, they make me laugh. <laughs> Yorkshire pudding or Wensleydale cheese? Oh, Wensleydale cheese, of course. Leeds United or Sheffield Wednesday? I think you're an Arsenal fan, aren't you, by the way? Well, I'm from Southampton. Have you not, have you not heard anything I'm saying? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Cle- yeah, clearly, I need to work on my You used to work in the I chemist mean, there. <laughs> I forget the chemist. Yeah, okay. I'm a massive Saints fan. Massive, massive Saints fan. Lifelong Saints fan. Um, see, my family, you were senior ticket holders. And yeah, one way or another, when this thing is over, I want to go and get okay. watching watch the football. would be marvellous. Netflix or Disney Plus? Ooh. Um, gosh. That is Your tough. choice, not your kids' not choice. Not the kids'. This yeah. tough because I'm a massive Star Wars fan, yeah. and so that pulls me in the direction exactly. of Disney. The force pulls you towards it. Yeah, but everything else, I would say Netflix, because yeah. all my other favorite, you know, kind yeah, of yeah. Emily in Paris, Bridgerton, all this stuff that I used Come to on. watch. Uh, but it's either or. I think probably I would go Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah, so, so that means Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Yeah. Now, last one. This is the easiest one. We know you've got two daughters, Krishna and Nushka. We know that you crushed one of them on the ice at the National <laughs> History Museum. Oh God. No. But, <laughs> And this, you know, I'm talking as a father of three, I can ask you this, which one do you prefer? You, no, 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 just, no, no, ignore them, ignore them, no one's talking. Uh, no, I you, and me, you and me, we're talking. Just we're you talking. I tell you, actually, I prefer the dog. There we go. <laughs> She's another girl. And it wasn't my choice, it was their choice to have the dog. Because when I come home after these long times away, who's nicest to me? Yeah. Nova. Nova. Nova, our Fox Red Lab, okay. which I've got to be honest, I was very reluctant to yes. have in our family, got outvoted by all yes. the other girls in my life. And now you love the dog. I'm the same. Now, same. now the person who is happiest that I am home yeah. um, is Nova. So I've told the kids that. And yeah. Actually, I particularly enjoy teasing my youngest because I say, oh, she's now the middle middle child, which yeah. she, she really does not like, which is probably a bit mean because she's oh, only Are you nine, all going to so. move in if you win? I mean, like, I know you moved out, didn't you? Oh, definitely, for, for school yes. reasons. Oh, gosh. But... Yeah, yeah, no, the only reason, I know that was slightly, so the only reason... It was we, a school walking to school thing, wasn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah, it was my daughter, elder daughter's last term at primary school and she was allowed to walk to school by exactly. herself. And, and, and so we wanted her to have that experience, which is why we moved out because she couldn't walk from Downing Street. But no, gosh, I, we thought, I mean, we, we miss living there. And yeah. the, the custodians are just the most marvellous yeah. people who become part of your life. And they're such a lovely team. And they That's were the door staff and others. All of them, yeah. And, they're, and, and they're, they're great. And I won't embarrass them by naming them all. But they, um, they were so good with our girls. Uh, they were so good. And then they were very good with Nova when Nova arrived as well. But they, were, they, they made you feel very, very well, made us feel incredibly welcome. And we missed them, actually. I didn't get it. There's a problem when you leave. It, you know, it's called quite traumatic. You leave in such yeah. a hurry. It's not as if you get a chance to go and say bye to her. I haven't, I haven't had a proper chance to say thank yeah. you and goodbye to them all, which I'll obviously do when, when And will you repay for the flat above number 11? Uh, but, but the, well, we, the gold that we hear read about in reports, the yeah, gold no, wallpaper. Well, we did, we did our this own flat your, up. Yeah, the yes. number 10 flat where well, Mrs. You, T you get the choice to this year if you're the Prime Minister, don't you? That's very fair. You know, I, I, haven't, I, haven't had, I keep meaning to have that conversation with my wife at some point, but I'm not, not, you don't want to be presumptuous this year. I'm just working hard. I think, I, don't, I think we probably just live in the flat that we used to live in. I mean, we lived there up until like a month ago, right? So yeah. it would be a bit odd to not just go back there. Because it's still, we, all the wallpaper that we did is still up in that, that flat. So it's probably, probably, and that's where Mrs. Thatcher lived. And that always gives me goosebumps. Every, every time I was like, I can't believe we are living in this flat where Margaret Thatcher lived, right? Imagine what happened here. And I mean, it, and then you, I'd, you, know, you see the odd pictures yeah. of her in her flat. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that was that bit. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, the rover that, that took her to, to the Buckingham Palace is for sale. Is it really? In ni- May 1979, yeah. Oh, for, my but, gosh. So you could, I mean, uh, it's ex- rather than buy his- Nando's, buy the car. Well, buy the car, yeah. I mean, I t- it was a, such a privilege. Mm. I and mean, I, I really try to get the girls to to understand like, how much of a privilege it was for yeah. them to be able to spend a bit of their life there um, because the history is amazing. And just finally, Richie, you know, last question. Well, why, should, uh, why should people listen to this, if they can vote, vote for you? In a tweet. In a tweet. I Look, I... My values are the same 
as theirs. That's probably the most important thing, right? We're all conservatives and people have heard me talk about my values, about hard work, about aspiration, about family. Those are conservative values. I want to build a Britain that is based on those values. And people have seen my record. They know I can deliver things. They know I can act radically and boldly. They know I'll put the best interests of the country first. And right now, I think we all know, especially as conservatives, that the biggest challenge we face is economic. It's, and we need someone who is going to be able to get to grips with it. And I think I'm the best person to do that. Well, Richard Sunak, thank you for joining us this week on Chopper's Politics Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Andrew, you're joining to do your donut. I, I, yeah, I finished my donut right <laughs> in amongst your questions. Well, that was Rishi Sunak, and I'm back on the street outside his headquarters in London. What did I make of that? Well, I thought Rishi Sunak is impressive. Uh, He cares about his country. He loves the Tory party. He loves Tory party members, and he wants to be prime minister. He also has quite a good natural touch. He's connected to people. He likes Nando's. We know that ad infinitum. And he could be leader. I just wonder whether his pitch is one to the country and not necessarily to the actual people who might vote, the Tory party members. The jury is certainly out on that one. Anyway, that's my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Please email me, chopperspolitics at telegraph.co.uk or on Twitter, we're at Choppers Podcast. For more from me, please do sign up to my daily Choppers Politics newsletter, bringing you the best Westminster insights straight into your email inbox every weekday. Sign up for that, telegraph.co.uk, forward slash politics newsletter and do be sure to check out my weekly Peterborough Diary Gossip column out at 7pm on Fridays on our website and in Saturday's Daily Telegraph newspaper thanks once again to Richie Sunak for hosting us today at his headquarters thank you to my producers coming all this way to record it, Giles Gear and Louisa Wells and most of all thank you to you, well for listening remember if you can please do buy a copy of the Daily Telegraph you won't regret it Until next time, though, cheerio!